You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. AfterBuzz TV presents Chatting with Kathy. Sit-down interviews with Hollywood's leading actors, artists, and entrepreneurs. And now, your host of Chatting with Kathy, Kathy Kelly. Welcome to Chatting with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Kelly, and I am so excited to announce today's guest, Jennifer Stone. You have had such an incredible career for being so young. I mean, your most notable role being on Wizards of Waverly Place. Now you're on Nickelodeon's Dead Time Stories. I'm so excited to talk about all of that today. So thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. I love like the little bumblebee microphone. And <laughs> After I love buzz, the you get it. Genie, like, thing. <laughs> ah! I just got it mm -hmm. now. I feel slow now. <laughs> It takes a second, but yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for being here today. Thanks I, for having me. I feel like you have done so much. I mean, you started your acting career when you were six years old doing theater. Yeah. How did you get into it? Uh, it's actually kind of, my parents and I still joke to this day that it's like a hobby that got way out of control. Mm -hmm. um, because my my brother, he's very, he's more very much an inside play video games kind of guy. And uh, one summer, my mom was like, you have to find something to do except play video games. And he just found in the newspaper this community theater and wanted to go do it. So he did. And, of course, I was a little sister that was like, I want to be just like my cool older brother. So I followed in his footsteps. That's cool. And is there a lot of community theater? And you were from Arlington, Texas? Arlington, yeah. There's actually there's a good community okay. um, of theater and, 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 and youth um youth acting yeah. and, and everything like that there. They have Casa Mignana, they have Cats, they have Theater Arlington. I mean, they have a ton of stuff down there. Did you ever have to go to Dallas for stuff? Or? Um, I did a little bit, but really not that much. Okay. And yeah. what, what plays were you in when you were younger? Oh, Lord. I did so – I, like, lived at the theater. Um, I did uh, Annie – I did Schoolhouse Rock Live Junior, oh my gosh. which was like my. I, I had never like learned about Schoolhouse Rock. I love Schoolhouse Rock. Right, it's so good. Yeah. Like that was how I learned about it was through doing the play. And I was like, I still to this day, if I'm stuck in traffic, I'll listen to like, I'm just a Bill, and it'll make me so happy. <laughs> um, oh, what other? Shows I feel like I still know all the lyrics. To oh, that I do too. too. <laughs> no, I still there's sometimes like when I'm doing like when I'm writing something, I'll like use the conjunction junction mm -hmm. song. Like it's it's what's still, your function. Oh, so good. I'm dying right I'm now. I literally like <laughs> wanting to just listen to the soundtrack right now. But anyway, but yeah, I did that and I did like best Christmas pageant ever and Pocahontas and, you know, all this stuff, all the kind of stuff you would imagine. Mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of musicals as well, right? Yeah, I did musicals, uh, a lot of musical theater. I did like touring groups where we used to go to like old folks homes and do like a cabaret, not a cabaret, obviously, we were children. <laughs> But um, but like a you know musical review and so yeah, I, that was just my world and yeah. I loved it. Um, so around age nine is when you convinced your parents that this is what you wanted to yeah. do, and your mom started taking you on auditions. Yeah, she did. It took a lot of begging. Um, I think the first time we came out to California, she thought it would be like a two month vacation, and I would get it out of my system, and then we would never come back, mm -hmm. uh, which is totally fair of her to think. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just kept making progress and doing well. And so, and everybody was just like my team, I guess you could say, was just like, no, you need to keep bringing her out here. And, yeah. you know, she's, she can really do stuff out here. She's actually good at this, <laughs> <laughs> which was very sweet of them, but yeah. she can actually do this. And so my mom was like, okay, she really loves it. So, I mean, you have to have a lot of support from your family. Yeah, that's I was, a huge commitment. I was very lucky in that aspect. And also my brother was in high school at the time. Mm -hmm. So that made it a little easier because he wasn't, if he was closer in age to me, I, I don't think mm -hmm. my parents would have done it. And I would have understood in the long run because that would have been detrimental to him. And that's, yeah. you got to think about both kids. But yeah, so my dad stayed at home while he went to high school and my mom would come out with me. So. What does your dad do? He, um, oh, he's going to kill me. He's like a computer consultant accountant. Okay. Yeah, he's very... Multi-hyphenate. <laughs> Multi-hyphenate, very, very smart guy, great with numbers, and um, 
Yeah, he's definitely more of the officious type. Okay. Suit and tie kind of guy. So you started auditioning also at a very young age. And I know with auditioning comes, like, a lot of rejection, unfortunately. Yeah. I know that's hard at any age, but how did you deal with it when you were so young? Uh, well, when I was young, I didn't really think about it. I was kind of, um, I just, I don't know. Like, I just kind of had the ad. I was a really confident yeah. kid. I know that you are, like, so modest now. Yeah. I've watched all of your interviews, oh, and you're, you. like, such a modest person. But I heard that when you were younger, I was you kind were of a jerk. not. You not do your research. <laughs> oh, Lord. I appreciate it. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, I wish you didn't know that. <laughs> I was kind of like I probably would have kicked my own butt like mm -hmm. if I met myself back then because I was literally like they just they don't know what they're missing like if they yeah. don't they don't hire me like they're idiots and, and and I'm like okay well they probably have good reason like if they mm -hmm. don't hire you 10 year old Jennifer you know what I mean so um but yeah I was just a really confident kid so that actually helped a lot mm -hmm. um uh but yeah I mean it just I was yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, Secondhand Lions was the first major role mm -hmm. that you got. Um, Haley Joel Osment was also in yeah. that, also a child star. Um, what was it like? Did it? Did you fully grasp the how big it was? That is one project I so wish I could experience now, rather than later, mm -hmm. because it. I didn't. I didn't grasp it because I was. I was nine when when I shot that, and and it was cool. And we got to be around all these animals. Like there were all these different animals on mm -hmm. set. So I mean, we had lions on set and That's like crazy. monkeys, and it was it was like the best summer ever for a nine year old. But it's like the only thing I knew Michael Caine from was I went up to him the first day and was like, "You are awesome in Miss Congeniality." That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> And I'm just like, and now I look at his, his body of work, and I look mm -hmm. at Robert Duvall's body of work, and I look at Hayley Haley Jossman's, and, and even, like, the people that played my parents, I look at their body of work, and I just would have loved to be the actor that I am now and in such a position of wanting to learn and, like, soak in from actors that obviously have been around a lot longer and know mm -hmm. a lot more than I do and just watch them act. You know, yeah. I would have loved using that more as a learning experience. But no, I was at school and playing with monkeys <laughs> instead, which I guess has its that place. Is a, it is a childhood dream. I mean, true. you're basically working at a zoo. And yeah. No, to it was such a blessing. <laughs> but I do wish I could have had that later in life. Yeah. So after that, you had a series of smaller roles on TV mm -hmm. and then got linked up with the Disney Channel for a pilot yeah. that also starred a lot of other <laughs> successful actors yeah. who have come from Disney, like uh, Vanessa. The Hudgens mm -hmm. was in it. Who else Brandon was in it? Brandon Smith, Moises yeah. Arias. Um, yeah, there was a ton of people on that show. Uh, it was kind of like the pre... It, I mean, just to give you an idea of how long ago it was, Vanessa had just wrapped High School Musical 1. Mm -hmm. um, and they didn't know how big of a success no, that would be. No, it was just like... Either. They just... Everyone just thought, oh, it's another Disney Channel movie. Like, we had a lot of fun doing it and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just... It, it's been really cool to have done that project and sort of seen the trajectories that all mm -hmm. of us have taken since then. Yeah. It seems like a lifetime ago, to be honest. And you always hear that Disney Channel is, uh, they really want to invest in the, the kids that they have as yeah. actors, and they bring them back for a lot of other things. That's kind of how you got brought in for the pilot of Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah. They brought you in to audition for that. They kept you in mind. Uh, so yeah. what was that process like? They're, they're very, they are, you're absolutely right. They're very good about keeping people in mind and, and, um, and, sort of having being faithful to certain actors which is really great mm -hmm. um and and actually what happened was I, I came in to audition for Alex um because usually they cast like the yeah. best friend stuff later uh I came to audition for Alex and they were like you know what they just like last minute were like here can you try these out and just like see what you can do with them and I was like sure okay and, um, you know, I, I just had a lot of fun with them, and I was like, there's a lot of opportunity to yeah. really make a human being out of this, which is the goal always when you get, a, you know, a set of sides, and, uh, or at least for me. And, um, and yeah, I guess they, they liked it. Yeah. They liked what I did, and, and um, you know, and then they brought in Selena and some of the other girls that they brought in for Alex as well. Um, and we read together, and, you know, Selena and I had good chemistry, and... I guess the rest is history. Yeah. So. You guys filmed the pilot and it got yeah. picked up. Yeah. What was that? Very lucky. Like, what was your first reaction? How did you find out? Oh, Lord. Um, it was pretty surreal, I have to say, because I was, I was think I was 14 mm -hmm. when it got picked up. And 
I mean, obviously, I had no idea what, like, the magnitude of it. Mm -hmm. I was just excited because I was going to get to work. Yeah. For a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't going from job to job to job. Like, I would have a steady job for a bit. Mm -hmm. So I was just excited about that. Um, but yeah, I had, I, I look back at it now and I'm like, I had no idea what all it would entail and, and what all it would mean. And, and, you know, yeah. I Four mean, obviously I was excited. Special. Yeah. Like I was, obviously I was ecstatic when I got mm-hmm. the phone call, but I just look back at it now and I'm just in awe of how much I, I didn't realize yeah. about what it would end up meaning which is kind of cool in retrospect were you with your family at the time or uh yeah okay yeah so I what was. was their reaction like uh they were they were they've always been really supportive mm-hmm. so they were excited I think I got the call around uh Christmas actually back when I was home in Texas which is a pretty good Christmas present yeah I'd if I remember so. correctly <laughs> sometimes my memory can be fuzzy but I do think it was around Christmas that I found out so I was home for the holidays and my family was just I, I'm really, I'm really grateful that I got that phone call when I was with them. Yeah, and you always say that Wizards of Waverly Place was kind of like your high school, oh, since totally. you were there from when you were 14 mm-hmm. until 18. Um, so why do you think that was? Well, I mean, not only was it the age uh, of high school, because that's when you go through the all this, the fun changes and, <laughs> and puberty, which is you know on on camera forever for me, which is awesome. <laughs> um, but also, it, it's. I mean, I did have my schooling on set and everything, but also that's where, yeah, I think I look at it my, like my high school is, that's where I went through that transition in my life. And those people really mean, they still to this day mean a lot to me because um, they were a part of shaping who I am today. Mm-hmm. So they really, I mean, I call them my second family all the time, but they really are, yeah. you know? And that's one of those things is it, it's kind of a cliche to call your your co- co-stars, your family, but they really are. And no, because that's your life for yeah. the, those years. Exactly. It's a, it's a fun life, but that's your life, mm-hmm. you know? And I heard that you, like, you hung out with Selena Gomez. You guys would, like, watch Friends, off, oh, like, yeah. when you guys weren't filming. And that guys, was all of you guys just hang out all the time. <laughs> well, our schedule synced up perfectly with, like, the TBS reruns. <laughs> so we would always, like, during lunch, like, watch Friends. And that's her favorite show. And mm-hmm. I love it, too, because I, you know, have senses. Um, but yeah, so we would always watch friends and, and just, you know, or family guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was, it was a real playground, I have to say. I mean, obviously we worked really hard and, but, um, it was a lot of fun too. I mean, it was a really great environment to grow up in. Mm -hmm. And since you didn't have that typical high school experience of like, um, you know, going to prom, going to homecoming. I heard that at the rap party after season four, they had a prom theme. They did have a prom theme, um, which it was bittersweet, which I guess a prom would be because it's kind of like, especially senior prom. Yeah, the end the of end your end high of school. Your high school. But I mean, because we were all like, crying and like you know um all these things but yeah it was prom themed so like i know like david and some of his friends uh did like a dumb and dumber like prom oh my gosh and the blue tuxes (laughs) yeah i think so or like top hats or something like i said my memory is the worst i'm good for lines and that is it (laughs) um and i did like this 50s thing so i was like all decked out in vintage and yeah like it was it was awesome like it gave you that chance to sort of Go find your prom dress. Yeah. And so, I mean, that was really sweet. And they did, like, yearbooks for us mm-hmm. and everything with, like, pictures from oh out, throughout the show. Like, they were – that group of people is just top-notch. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Do you still have the yearbook? Oh, yeah. Really? I'm never going to lose that thing. Did my house sign it? Down. Like, oh, yeah, oh, totally. Oh I took it around set and made sure everybody signed it. It was, like, a big thing. <laughs> oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, one of the things that I admire about you is that you are an advocate for continuing education. Yeah, and you wanted to continue you. education yeah. after you already had this successful career. Um, so how did you go about doing that? Well, I am – I always joke that I'm glacially working on my associate's degree. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously acting comes first. Yeah. And it's my first love and it's what I'm most passionate about. But um, I just was – I was raised in a family where – naivety and ignorance wasn't a virtue um and I mean my my parents constantly took me to museums and and was constantly like you know you can do anything you put your mind to you've got to work really hard but you can do anything and and, um 
and we were just always reading and everything. Um, so, but right now I take classes at a community college whenever I can okay. fit it in my schedule. So part time. So yeah, yeah. So I'm a part. I guess the simple way that would be the simple <laughs> way of saying it, rather than going roundabouts like I am. Uh, but yeah, I'm a part time student. What are you studying? Um, on? Well, I'd like to get uh, an associate's and then transfer. Okay. But I'd like my uh, focus to be in psychology. Okay, I heard psychology and anthropology. Was yeah, kind of well, it's any meant. kind of human studies. Okay. I mean, obviously, I'm fascinated by people. If yeah. they, if I do what I do, I it'd be weird if I was an actor and wasn't fascinated by people. But um, but I'd also like to maybe go into some uh, focus maybe on some kind of forensics as well with that, like forensic wow. psychology. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of totally random, yeah. but it's something I really enjoy. I feel like studying people in general will also help with acting too. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's and I I mean I took a psych class uh, before um, like I think like last summer and um, it, it helped immensely. Yeah. Because anytime you can anytime you can see something and then identify it, it's a lot easier to portray. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. I so. agree with that. Yeah. Uh, when you were on set, you had a tutor mm -hmm. on set for all the, yeah, all the actors. Oh yeah, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, if they were just like, "You're on your own. Good luck," mm -hmm. it would have been oh impossible. Oh yeah, completely. Especially with math. I am not a math person. Really? No. That's my favorite. Really? I, I'm a huge math nerd. I Mark, love it. Mark, hey, kudos to you. Man. <laughs> I have so much respect for people that are good with math. I am just not. It's mm -hmm. not my thing. But doesn't click for some reason. It's a different, I think I have this theory that it's a different, um, I don't think it's my theory, but I think I read it somewhere, that it's uh, just different kind of brain functioning. Mm -hmm. Well, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since you did grow up on set, you learned a lot on set, did you also, do you think you grew as an actress? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's impossible to be working on anything and not learn something and not grow as an mm -hmm. actor. Because um, you guys had a, a live audience every yeah, week we as did, well. Yeah, we did, which that's the theater came mm -hmm. in really in handy yeah. for that because it's virtually the same thing. Um, but I actually, I really feel like I got to hone in on uh, my comedy uh, skills mm -hmm. on Wizards because I had done mostly drama before. Um, I had never really done comedy before, which actually, it, it, it seems to surprise a lot of people, uh, which I guess is They're good. so different. They're so different, but yeah, I'd, I'd only done drama before I did comedy with Disney, so I guess I really got to spend that time really honing in on learning how to sharpen those skills. Yeah, um, and so many people from that show have gone on to have really successful careers. Yeah. Yourself, Selena, David We've Henry, very lucky. Greg Sulkin, yeah. and Bailey Madison, who is one of my oh favorites my right now. She's so freaking adorable that girl is just a <laughs> rock star like i swear she has a heart of gold and she so cares about people and she just she that she has her head on straight like she's one of those ones you'll never have to worry about i feel like she's, she's gonna so be so talented. big she reminds me of a um younger dakota fanning where she's mm -hmm. just so intelligent I but she's that. in this little package yeah and then no, there she's were so times bubbly all the when time she too. worked on wizards there were times when i was like you're more together than the rest of us <laughs> Like, I'm just like, you're putting us all to shame, lady. Um, I mean, you know, but she's she like Benjamin Button. She's just an adult in the she little is. She time. totally is. She totally is. But, like, not in a creepy way. Because I feel like Benjamin Button can get a little creepy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, Bailey, adorable, amazing soul. Mm -hmm. For sure. And um, while you were working on the show, I know your character, Harper Finkel, had a lot of interesting outfits. Yeah. So do you consider yourself a fashionista? Um... I don't. Does any girl consider themselves a fashionista? I feel like some do. We need to, we need to talk to them. I don't know. Like <laughs> I like I don't know what their secret is. But I I, I just wear what I like. Mm -hmm. Um, I like a lot of vintage stuff. I like a lot of, and I and I know who I'm inspired by. Yeah. Um, my Pinterest style board is full. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I just know what I like and wear what I like. And What's your, what you're comfortable in? What I'm comfortable in. Yeah. Comfort's a big thing for me. You I think that's so important. Oh, it's such a huge, you will see me in hats a lot because I don't feel like messing with my hair. <laughs> my hair makes me crazy. Um, but yeah, it's just whatever I'm comfortable in. That's awesome. Um, so after you were on Wizards of Waverly Place, you went on to do Harry the Spy, Blog yeah. Wars, and Mean Girls too. Um, what was the first step after, you know, being on Disney like? Well, I actually did those during Disney. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the first step after Disney, um, it just was deciding what, 
I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was kind of it because it, it's it's definitely a bubble. Yeah, Disney's definitely a bubble, and so when you come out of it, you kind of go, okay, you have to really like, reacclimate yourself to the town and like the business because it changes. You know, you go back to auditioning and you go back to to not square one, but you definitely go back to a place that you've been sheltered from yeah. for a few years. For Harriet the Spy, you didn't have to audition mm-hmm. at all, right? No, I was very lucky with that one. Disney, you know, was just like, we've got this for you. It's going to mm-hmm. be great. I did have to audition for Mean Girls. Um, but at the same time, I knew I was going back to Wizard, so there wasn't any pressure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was coming out of it. It was just sort of reacclimating was the most important thing. And then deciding what I wanted to do and what I wanted to focus on with my life and not o- not only with my work but with my life as well. Yeah. I know you're a huge advocate for uh, strong female leads. Oh, too. yeah. Love them. Why, why do you think that's important? Well, I just – I don't know. I just – I don't respond. It's hard to play a character you don't respond to. Mm-hmm. And I don't respond to, like, the girl that needs to be saved all the time. I think we all have moments where we need to be saved, and, and, and it's totally okay to be vulnerable – but I don't like the girl that doesn't try to save herself first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't like the girl that just whines and, like, waits for a guy. I you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just – and it's and I feel like I'm, I'm taking a women in American history class right now. Um, so, I, like, my, my feminism radar is, like <laughs> – I was reading about, like, when um, suffragists first got the vote just this morning. So, like, my feminist oh. thing is, like, all, all all up in business. My, like, great, great, great aunt was involved with women's suffrage. Was she really? Yeah, Florence Kelly. She That's was, like, awesome. all about, uh, like, I kids love that name, too, yeah. Florence. So, That's anyways. amazing. Yeah. What a cool, like, history to have I in know. your family. Yeah. But, yeah, so, I mean, it's just I, – I, I really believe in unity in women, and I really believe in strength in women, mm-hmm. and I just – I don't see why you wouldn't use the wonderful tool of, like, television and movies and music to move that forward rather than pull it back. Yeah. Are there any roles that you would want to play ultimately? Oh, there's so many. Um, I know one, that you look up to, like, Helen Mirren and uh, yeah. Meryl Streep, too. Yeah, uh, both the Kates, Blanchett and Winslet, <laughs> love them. Um, Jessica Chastain just is a force. Um, yeah, there's a lot of roles I want to play. A lot of the roles I want to play are actually from classical theater. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest ones um, is Laura and the Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. Which is funny that you that the, that it, that just followed the strength in women character yeah. because she isn't what people would normally think of as a strong woman because she's very internal and mm-hmm. and I won't ge- I am totally geeking out by the way on <laughs> Tennessee Williams I get sidetracked very easily as you can already no, tell no this um, is the place <laughs> but I but I I just I I love I love that character for a lot of reasons yeah. But yeah, one of the things on your bucket list is to eventually be on Broadway as yeah. well. So, yeah. what are some of your favorite Broadway plays? Oh, there's so many. Um, I'd love to do a musical. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to do a musical. Although sometimes I hear the chops of of um, some of those people, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> they're so good. Um, but you know, I can I can I can build a pretty good Broadway tune. I like to think. <laughs> um, but uh, I love Sondheim, Into the Woods. I love oh, yeah. uh, Sweeney Todd. Love. Um, I really loved um, American Idiot. I really okay. enjoyed that one. I have to say, I love the music for Spring Awakening. Um, there's a ton that I really, really like. I do like the classic theater as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the Arthur Millers, the Tennessee Williams, the Chekhov. Um, there's just a lot of there's a lot of opportunities in theater to just mm-hmm. it's a different kind of connection with an audience I think and a different kind of experience as an actor and I feel like a lot of Broadway plays they're just so different like while yeah. a lot of them follow the sh- same genre the stories just like take you in different directions totally totally and it's just it's because I love my job in all sorts of mediums because mm-hmm. they do bring different aspects yeah. for you to enjoy yeah and I just love I love. I love in the fact that in theater you get to experience what the characters are experiencing in chronological order and like all the way through and at the magnitude and the moments when they're experiencing them rather than stopping and starting like you do with TV and film. Yeah. Um, so I want to go back to Mean Girls too. Yeah. It heavily, it addresses the um, issue of bullying. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I know that you guys did like a lot of PSAs yeah, for that as well. This is anti-bullying month right now, so I feel like it's is a it very, really October? Yeah, October oh. is anti-bullying month. I'm so out of the loop. What day is it? <laughs> I mean, I no feel idea. like all year should be anti-bullying. Well, yeah, month. it should. Yeah, this is the, the all month year where... should be treating people exactly the way you would want to be treated. I think, but why do you think that was important to uh, take that role? Well, I, I think it was important to take that role just because it's something. I think one of the greatest things when you're going through something like bullying is empathy, to hear empathy from somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a really important tool in just connecting with human beings in general. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was important to just kind of reach out and go, you're not alone. Me too, yeah. in a way. Like, I've been through that. Like, and it sucks. I, yeah, and, I and, too. But, and quite frankly, it's, it's always most, like, most of the time, it's projection of insecurity from the person that's doing the bullying. Yeah. Um, so I think it was important just to understand what it is rather than getting wrapped up in the emotion yeah. of it and learning that it won't last forever and you're not – You're stronger you're, than Yeah, them. you're stronger than that and that you're you're not alone. Yeah. At that. what age did you have to go through that? Um, well, I went through bullying um, really early on because I started homeschooling because of work. Yeah. Um, but I went through it like second, third grade when I started working. Okay. It was tough because that's when everybody started to get, you know, just weird about it and always everybody had their two cents. Yeah. So, but yeah. Do you go back do. home at all now? All the time. It's my, it's my, it's my safe place. Yeah. It's my sanctuary. Your parents still live in, yeah. in Texas, yeah. right? They're not West Coast people. Yeah. <laughs> So what do um, people think, like, when you go back home? Or do they treat you the same, or...? Well, I have a group of people. The group of people that I always touch base with when I'm back home are the ones that I've stayed in contact with over the years. And they, I mean, they treat me like me. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't treat me like some kind of stigma or some kind of, you know, um, entity or whatever. You know, they, they just treat me like me because they've known me since I've was doing theater and and a lot of my friends are doing really cool stuff too i yeah. mean my my girlfriend a girlfriend of mine who i knew since you know the sandbox um is like an, a brilliant painter you know what i mean so they're all very accomplished in their own right yeah um so so yeah i mean it's it's nice to go home because i it's 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 like a it's like a taste of normalcy mm -hmm. when you've been you in can LA. You get wrapped up with things. Yeah, well, you do. Well, LA LA is a whole other bubble in itself. It's like there's the Disney bubble and then there's the LA bubble that yeah. encompasses all of it. But um, so yeah, you got to get out in the real world a little bit and go, oh, that's not normal. Yeah, you do painting and sketching as well, right? Yeah, I, I dabble. I dabble. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like, are you just a creative person? Like. Um, well, I actually, when I was younger, before I got into theater, I thought I would be an artist. Like, I thought I would paint and sketch, and, and that's what I would, and I would go to art school. Um, but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> um, and, I, and I'm trying to, to get, get past my perfectionism, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just enjoy it for what it is and just enjoy sketching for what it is rather than having an expectation of what I want it to look like. Yeah. But, yeah, I just enjoy – I enjoy creating things, and I get a lot of – pleasure out of that mm -hmm. so I, I try to do it in any kind of capacity yeah um, I want to talk about one of the other projects you worked on okay. nothing left to fear which yes. was actually produced by slash from <laughs> guns and roses yeah I did that right after Disney and it was really funny that that was the first thing that followed <laughs> like Harper to exorcism it's kind of a 180. Totally. <laughs> like, I didn't take any time to just ease out of it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you take the projects that come your way. Yeah. So. How involved was he in the process of making the film? Oh, he was very involved. Um, I mean, he scored the music. He The music for the film as well, which is beautiful. Um, yeah, and he was very involved with the, our director, Anthony Leonardi, um, with just storyboards and casting and just all of it. And he was he visited set. He was doing a tour at the time, so it was a little tricky for him. But he was on set and... And overseeing things, and he was constantly being emailed things. But and he's such a cool dude. Yeah, like very low key, very unassuming, which I really appreciate. Because you know, if you when you've been in the business for a second, mm -hmm. you start to see whenever you see egos, you kind of like, oh, oh god, yeah. here we go. But he's not like that at all, which is always refreshing. I want to talk about that for a second because there are. I feel like I come across. You hear these stories about people where they're just such divas, but then. A lot of people that I come across in the industry, they're so humble and they're so friendly. Yeah. So what do you think is one attribute that most or all successful people in the industry have? 
I think it's just their focus is on the work. It's not about anything else. Yeah. Um, the people that I've worked with that I love the most is they – are passionate about what they do and they want to produce the best product. It's not necessarily no. about being famous. It's I, about I think I think the people that have an attitude and the people that have, you know, are divas or whatever have something to prove. Mm-hmm. And I think they're, you know, keep checking their watch for their 15 minutes to be up. And I, I don't think that they really have. I don't know if they really have a lot of vision. Mm-hmm. For, for things. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that to them because that would be very insulting and mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to do that to anybody. Um, but I think it, it takes a, a lot of just focus on, on your vision and what you want to accomplish. And, and, and like I said, putting the best TV show or play or artwork or movie or whatever medium you're working in out there rather than worrying about the attention that you'll receive from it. Yeah, I agree with that. So, so now... You are on Dead, Dead Time, Time Stories. Stories on <laughs> we'll Nickelodeon. <say> <laughs> um, so explain this. Uh, I mean, you're the babysitter yes. in the show. You tell the kids that you're babysitting for these horror stories. Yeah. I feel like it's um, there isn't kind of that genre on TV for kids right now. We had Are You Afraid of the Dark way yeah. back in the day. Do you guys get a lot of comparisons to that? Yeah, we do, um, which I love that because those are the shows I grew up on, and I – was obsessed with them like goosebumps are you afraid of the dark like those were that like twilight zone twilight zone is still my jam like i <laughs> That's still a little more adult then. it's still more adult but yeah. it's like i still watch the reruns i have the whole like series on box set like i <laughs> love the twilight zone but it's it, it's along the same lines um but what i really loved about it is yes there isn't a show like that for kids out there right now and also it promotes reading so much mm-hmm. and i love that like the babysitter doesn't come to the house and, like, hand both the kids a device or pop in a movie. You yeah. know, she's, like, she's going, let's read together. And it's 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 something that really excited me because I'm a really big big reader. I'm a very avid. Um, what kind of genre? Books. Oh, everything. Really? I will read everything. Everything with a binding. I'm, I will read. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, I loved that. And, yeah. Um, and plus, it's just fun being sort of the Vincent Price narrator, yeah. you know, sort of weaver of these these tales kind of thing. And um, but yeah, it's just I love the concept, and I love that it's it's for it's I I love that it's not your typical kid show. Yeah, that's what really excites me about it. Do you have experience babysitting? Because I, I mean, do. You do. Yeah. Okay, I didn't think so. Just because you got. You're starting acting. Well, so I mean, young. It, it's yeah. I mean, I, I did uh, sneak it in here and there. Um, you know, sometimes with producers' kids or you know, just people have kids and they need help sometimes. Yeah. So I would babysit. Um, I don't know if I was the best babysitter, <laughs> just because I can be obviously I can be way too like, you know, intellectual and and inside myself rather than just like out and playing with blocks. Um, but that helps teach the kids as well. It does, but sometimes it bores them to tears, which I get. <laughs> like, I totally get it. Like, sometimes they're like, can you please shut up and let's play Legos? You know what I mean? Um, which I need to learn how to shut up and play Legos sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I, I enjoyed it, but I definitely had to go back and sort of go, what was it like when yeah. I babysat all those years ago? <laughs> Do you have a um, favorite story that's been featured on the show thus far? Uh, the Beast of Baskervilles. Okay. Yeah. Are, you're a fan of the horror genre. Oh, yeah. Totally. So yeah. Um, I want to know, when does it air and stuff, too? Uh, well, it airs on Thursday nights at, okay. on Nickelodeon at 8 and 8.30. Um, yeah, they do two 30-minute episodes back-to-back. And so. it's written by Annette and Gina, uh, Gina Cascone. Gina yeah, Cascone. and then, it's based on their book series. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go, what's really cool about it, too, is you can go to the bookstores, pick up their books, and, and read, because, I mean, obviously it's television and we have certain restrictions. Yeah. So there's some details that we might miss or we might interpret in a different way than you would. And it's kind of cool to, like, read the books before the episode airs and sort of see what we couldn't put in or, like, oh, man, I didn't see that the way they did. Or, yeah. you know, have a chance to sort of imagine it differently. I like that. Because yeah. then you kind of – and it also, I'm sure, it expands on what you see on TV. Because exactly. you have to condense it for those 30 minutes. Exactly. Episodes. So, and that's always what I love about, like, like if I love a movie that's based on a book, I am absolutely going home and buying the book. Because yeah. there's – you just – you can't get everything in, in, in that medium, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But that's the beautiful thing about books. But the show just brings it to life. It does. It really it, – it has – it makes – 
it brings a lot of fun and a lot of life to these great stories that that the Cascone sisters have have weaved together mm-hmm. and and um, and spun. And it's just it's just a fun show. Yeah. So along with acting, yeah. you also have written an advice column for Tiger Beat. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> Um, so were you always that friend growing up that gave advice to other friends? I, I don't know if it, like, has to do with my love for psychology, but, I, yeah, I've always kind of been, I've always liked to think I'm a pretty good listener, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, I've always ended up being people's therapist, it seems like, uh, which can be a good and a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I also like being there for people when I can um, and helping them and just give perspective. Or And I, obviously I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. There's a lot of stuff I'm still trying to figure out. But if I can give sort of an outside perspective or or have them look at it, sometimes they, you just need to get out of yourself a little bit. And if I can help somebody do that yeah. and sort of look at a situation in a different way, um, you know, I'm more than happy to helps. I mean, I just want people to be happy. Yeah. So, you know, if I can move them towards the happy place, I, you know, I will. Did you ever have to get advice on giving advice? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of times, there was a lot of times on that advice column that I was like, Mom, what would you do in this situation? Because I have no idea. Uh, you know. And she helped uh, out a lot? Oh, yeah, totally. Was she always kind of your support system growing up? Well, my, both my parents okay. were. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think the mother-daughter relationship is important, and I was lucky enough to have a really healthy one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she was always there with advice for me whenever I needed it. And she's I like to think she's, she's a pretty wise lady. Yeah. Pretty sound mind. We see a lot of child stars. They grow up, and they go a little crazy. But you, obviously, have stayed normal. Um, oh, I have my craziness. <laughs> it's just, it just do- hasn't manifested in itself way, in the way that you normally see. Yeah. Do you attribute, uh, you know, being that close to your parents to why you are who you are today? Yeah, and I think it's also I, – I, I definitely contribute it to my parents. Um, but I also contribute it to – just it's personality types as well. Uh, it's environment. It's personality types. Because um, that's just not that's just not the person that I am. I mean, I'm so much more of like a sit at home in sweatpants and like with a top knot and like watching Downton Abbey than I am or reading a book or than I am like a let's go out. Like if you mm-hmm. talk to my friends, like they know how hard it is to get me out of the house. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I'm much more of a cozy sweater. Let's go grab tea and talk then, you know, let's go where I'm yelling at you because yeah. I can't hear. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I'm, a, I'm more of a one-on-one kind of gal. Especially when you go out and, like you said, you have mm-hmm. ADD. I'm the same way. you just oh. like, there's so many distractions And I feel so around. bad because I'm just like, it's not you and I'm trying to listen to what you're saying, but that strobe light is so shiny. <laughs> Like, I'm just, like, I, I can't, like, I'm totally, I turn into, like, one of those bugs that's, like, attracted to all the lights and all the people and all the, the girl over here with glitter on her face. Like, I just, I can't do it. Like, it's so overwhelming. Yeah. Um, so, moving forward in your career and in your life, is there anything else that you hope to accomplish? Oh, there's so much. I'm, ugh, I still can't believe I've been as blessed as I have to be so young and have done, gotten the chance to do as much as I've gotten the chance to do. Like, I, I wake up sometimes and just, I'm like... Thank you, God. Like that's that's yeah. incredible that you've you've chosen to give me those opportunities. Um, but yeah, there's so much I want to accomplish. Like you know, you mentioned the bucket list thing of being on Broadway. I really would like to get a college degree as well. Um, I would really like to to make movies and make television that I'm really proud of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would really like to produce, uh, have my own production company. Like I, there's so many things I'd like to do. I'd like to you know write a book someday like there's yeah. there's so like there's a laundry list of things to do so thank thank god i'm i'm young as well and i have time <laughs> you have to sort of get it together yeah. yeah exactly so there's no like pressure i guess yeah. on the time limit so you said um you have some aspirations behind the camera to produce mm-hmm. what like what kind of stuff well there's just there's I'm, I'm constantly in a state where i'm like oh i love especially like with books uh, especially with books, where I read a book and I'm like, oh man, you know that would make a great movie, and 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 I and I and I've just surrounded myself so much, and I and I hope to continue to do this and and learn more, obviously. But I've surrounded myself so much with movies throughout my life, and and different sort of references and music, and and there's just a lot of things that I I see stories of, and I see so much potential in. 
-hmm. and I would love to be able to have the opportunity to carry it through. Yeah. Um, so that's where I think I'm more interested in the production side of, not more, yeah. but I'm also interested in the production side of Is things. there a book that you can pick out specifically? Oh, man. Um, well, there's a lot that they've already turned into movies, which bums me out. They've done a great job, mm -hmm. but it, it just, like I said, you, you get, like, attached to books when you read them. Yeah. And, um, but there's a lot, there's, there's, um, I think The Alchemist would make a really beautiful oh, movie. Yeah. I think that would make, it would be tough to do. It would be very challenging to do, but it would make a very beautiful movie. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of them, I think, that would make really, really stunning, heartwarming um, movies. There's a lot of stuff, like I'm a big fan of F. Scott Fitzgerald, and I'm a big fan of, um, like, Franny and Zoe, I love as well. It's one of my favorite books. Um, I would love to see sort of those characters come to life. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of there's a lot of things, and and sometimes it's because I just really want to play a character, uh -huh. um, and sometimes it's because I want to see somebody. I just want to see those characters have air in them. Yeah. If that makes sense. So you mentioned Kate Blanchett, Kate Winslet. Yeah. Is all there anyone's career that you hope to emulate? Um. Hmm. Or do you want to go down your own path? Well, I would like to go down my own path. Um, obviously, because I, I I don't. I'm a big believer that everybody has their own story mm -hmm. and, you know, nobody else's chapters are going to resemble anybody else's. Not to keep relating everything to books, by the way. I guess <laughs> I'm just, like, in a very, like, book nerd place in my life right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, th I, there's definitely bits and pieces from people's stories that I would like to, to resemble. Like, I love what Sandra Bullock has done where she's really um, – she's really made a life for herself mm -hmm. and not made work her life. I really respect that about her. Yeah. Um, and I respect, like, the work that Kate Blanchett has done with theater. Um, and, you know, and Jessica Chastain has done the same. And there's a lot of – there's different aspects about these people's career that I really respect. But I don't think there's any one person that's done exactly what I want to do. Because mm -hmm. I'd love to be an old lady, you know, with, like, an antique store in, like, New Orleans or something. <laughs> um, and I don't know any actress that's done that. But, uh, but yeah, that's one of my bucket list things. <laughs> Um, so what advice do you have for young actors who might want to follow in your footsteps? Join a theater. Join a theater. I, I literally to this day use stuff. I learned, you learn the basics, you really get a footing for it, and you, um, you find out if you really, it's a safe environment to find out if you really love it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think, I think people get into acting a lot of times with different notions of what it is. And theater's a really great way to learn the basics, surround yourself with it, and to really grasp what it is. Mm -hmm. And get so. more comfortable. As and an totally yeah. get more comfortable. I mean, and, and even if you find out you don't like it, which is totally fine, um, you come out of it, gives you, it makes you grow as a human being in just a lot of different ways, too. Like, I just, I'm a big believer in starting kids in theater. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's always my first advice for people. Cool. Well, this is our shameless plug section. So oh, plug okay. away, Dead Time Stories, Twitter, Instagram, anything you oh, got. Oh, okay. Uh, do I look somewhere? Um, you can look at the camera okay. if you want. All right, I'm looking at the <laughs> camera. All right, shameless plug section. So watch Dead Time Stories on Nickelodeon on Thursdays at 8 and 8.30. Um, this coming Thursday, we've got some, you know, a dark night and a creepy crawler, as usual. Um, and then my Twitter is at ComeAgainJen. Uh, my Instagram is ComeAgainJen14. Um, I think those are all the social media. That's all the social media that's coming to mind right now. Okay. So I'm sure I will get in the car and remember other ones, but <laughs> those are the two ones I check. Yeah. So. Well, Jen, thank you so much for joining no, us today. Thank you. And if you guys want to follow us, you can follow After Buzz TV on Twitter at After Buzz TV. You can find me at Katherine Kelly, and you can find all of our Chatting with Kathy episodes on iTunes. Just type in After Buzz TV, subscribe, rate, and comment. Again, Thank you for no, coming thanks, in today. Man. This Good was job. so much fun. Come back anytime. No, I, I would love it. <laughs> You're awesome. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of After Buzz TV. Buzz. Oh, see you we, later. We do it together. We do it together. Okay. Sorry, I didn't know we were doing we do it, it together. Again? Yes. Okay. Buzz, Buzz see you later. later. <laughs>
Opinions expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.